Welcome back guys, it's Madstar with another SPAC video and today we're going to be looking at Alusa Energy Corporation and it's going to be merging with a Norwegian company called Freyer Battery and this company has been going crazy and it's down 27% in the last um, two weeks I would say so uh, after its merger was announced with Freyer and that is mainly due to all the SPACs coming down recently. And personally, I would like to inform you guys that I have bought quite a lot of shares of Freyer, um, Alusa Energy, which is merging with Freyer, at around 10.6. Um, crazily, it did go down to 10.3 or 10.4, which was amazing because the minimum a SPAC can go to until the transaction is 10. That's its nav value and um, it can go under 10. Sometimes it can go to 9.9, .9, but basically around that 10 region. So you would only risk 3% downside. And I was in a bunch of these SPAC trading communities and people were rushing to this company. And I was wondering what's so great about this company? Why are people pouring money into Alusa Energy? Well, that's because you had a very little minimum downside. Well, as of Friday's close, it did go from its bottom up 6% to $11, and now you have a maximum loss of 10%. But thinking about it, if the SPAC mania can recover, your stock can recover about 30% just like that. And this one is one of those SPACs that can pretty much double. Uh, it's just lost its momentum because of all the SPACs going down, going towards the 10 regions basically. And that's because of what happened to Lucid Motors and, you know, too much speculation in the market and also the Dow crashing with the bond yields rising. So all of that. But in this video, I want to tell you guys what exactly is Freyer. Well, Freyer, I've got its investor presentation here and just a little bit more about what Freyer, uh, uh, Freyer is and the transaction details. So Freyer is a Norway based uh, developer of clean next generation battery cell production capacity. Today, it announced the public uh, listing with uh, Alusa. So there are some cool things about Freyer, which I really like, and some things are not the best, let me say so. They're not the best, but I'm okay with it, investing it till around the merger date, and maybe then I will think of pulling out. But for now, this seems like a nice investment for me. It's pro forma, the market cap will be around 1.4 billion, at share price 10 so if it's a, around 11 now it's already 1.5 billion and um, we know that the EVs in Europe have to get uh, no there has to be EVs in America and Europe by 2030 so that is pretty promising for this whole generation and since Freyer is developing all these next-gen batteries and lithium-ion batteries this is a really great play for the next few years now, some of the things, the valuation is 1.4 billion, and this is uh, their executive team. I will be letting you guys have the this investor presentation in the link below, and we're just gonna go through this investor presentation, see what's so great about Freyer. So, well, let me just say so, they have zero revenue right now, and they are thinking about making gigafactories. I believe they want to have eight gigafactories by 2030. So this is kind of promising. But um, Norway is a country known for a lot of EV vehicles. And it's one of the, I, I believe, more than 50% EV vehicles were sold in Norway last year. And they're going to be uh, delivering low-cost battery cells uh, ethically and sustainably sourced from their supply chain. So this is a bit of um, the prices of electricity rising in Europe. That's what they're showing here. Here are some of their big partners. I can see Siemens is pretty big. And um, some of the one has been confidential. I don't know why they would say confidential. Probably it's something really cool and they don't want to tell us. But also it's kind of risky. But I don't know. I don't think the company's name is confidential. Um, but that's it from there. Uh, investment highlights, um, they have an ex experience ex execution team, number five. Um, this is a bit too simplistic, doesn't really matter in my investment thesis in this company. Um, here we've got their battery technology 
I don't really understand the bi battery technology so much, but I see there's recycling going on, there's cell, they're mining and uh, refining. And that's as of a percentage uh, for their supply chain. And this is some of their projections for the global CO2 emissions that targeting 81%. Now, in, in an investment thesis, I wouldn't really mind this, but ethically, I do see where people would be interested to invest in Freyer uh, over here. And also do mind, Freyer could partner with these big oil companies as well. That could be something that they could do in the future. This is um, to be the lowest carbon battery cell producer in the world. That's their main objective. Um, that, that's what they say, Freyer. This is what other countries are doing. This is what North America is doing. And they want to produce at the lowest cost possible. Uh, so then they can get pretty good margins for their batteries. So let me just quickly go down. This is some more stuff, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff, more stuff. And here are their projections for the global battery demand expected to reach 5,300 by 2030. So the battery demand is going to pretty much explode in the coming years. That's what they're thinking. So it's a highly growing market. Uh, most of it's going to be passenger vehicles, energy system storage, and commercial vehicles. And there's going to be a shortfall by 2030. That's what they're expecting. So let's just go a bit more down because this presentation is pretty big. Some more about the management. You guys can obviously read this. Supply chain and more about their technology. I know cathode and anode stuff in chemistry class, but... I just can't be bothered to learn all my chemistry again. Um, but if you guys are chemistry people, you can check out all this technology and how they make these batteries. I would have loved to known all this technology, like cathode anodes, how these batteries work. But I just don't know it right now. But if you guys have the time and you, you, you want to invest in this company, I would suggest you guys also check this out. But okay, next part, I just want to get back to this... Um, very new page it's uh, quite down below so let me go cool let me go let me go let me go let me go so this is what they're thinking that they're gonna have six gigafactories by 2028 and um this is the timeline over here uh they talk about their team again um they have a lot of experience on the team dyson ev battery a lot of experience in this ev sector right over here and some more some more some more guys there are a lot of pages so this is the most interesting one actually and they as you can see they have zero revenue in 2021 2022 11 then 16 then 16 then oh no i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry this is the total revenue 11 billion uh 11 million 321 million and by 2028 they're thinking of gaining 5.3 billion guys in revenue that's insane. So if they can get five billion by 2028, that's around seven years from here. The company is worth 1.5 billion right now. I think it's amazing getting 5.3 billion by 2028. Um, obviously, these are high speculations, but right as of now, they have zero billion, and there's still a lot of work for this company to do to get their batteries at the lowest cost. Uh, more about their uh, pro forma valuations over here. They have no debt as of right now. What I can see. Um, and they think they are quite attractively priced in the market right now. Uh, 9 to 10, 11 multiplied discount to public comparables. So the valuations are interesting. They've got nice, nice... Um, um, Valuation. Look at Quantum Scape, which is 4.1. Where's Freyer? This is 0 0.8 years Freyer. So Romeo, this is some of the competitors. This is the EV market, Hylion and stuff. And um, this is looking pretty, pretty interesting. This is fuel cell ones, Ballard, Plug Power. So that's all pretty interesting over here. They've got comparisons to Fisker. And they think that they are actually quite attractively priced. Uh, as you benchmark them to all these other EV companies, like let's say QuantumScape. So this is more and more and more stuff. Um, there's just so much in this presentation. I don't know if I'm going to look at all this presentation, 
But for me, uh, okay, the presentation is done. So the presentation is done. Right now, if you would buy it at maybe if the market crashes and it comes back to 10.5, I'd say buy, 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 buy. You're only going to have a 5% loss. Um, this video is getting pretty long. So I'm going to have to end this video. And I will see Alusa Energy soon enough at 15 to $20 if things go right. If this company gets a bit more attention like QuantumScape did. I mean, QuantumScape was $12, $13 for a lot of time. And then the boom came and QuantumScape went to $120. Now it's back at 60, but it's back with Bill Gates. Uh, let's see if Kathy Wood maybe buys this company. We'll see. Um, I'm gonna end this video right now. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below in the comment section below and make sure to like this video. Thank you guys and I'll see you guys next time. Big room.